Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello, Adam. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. Not much sports. Today we're going to be over the Baltimore Ravens 2021 NFL Draft. <laughs> Sorry, a little inside joke going on. Here we go. Baltimore going and drafting some good players. I'm going to be honest. I really like what John Harbaugh did here. Let's hop right into it, Mike. Rashad Bateman. What do you think? Rashad Bateman. I watched Rashad Bateman early in the year, very early in the year, and I'm like, this guy, why is this guy not being talked about more? That was the first thing I thought about. It was like when I watched Justin Jefferson the year before. I'm like, Justin Jefferson looks like a phenomenal receiver. Why, why is he not getting more coverage? I think Rashad Bateman is a phenomenal, could be a phenomenal talent. I believe he was my second ranked wide receiver in this draft, which is probably sooner than anybody else had him ranked. That's how much I like Rashad Bateman. I think he does everything well. He's very dangerous on 50-50 balls. I saw he goes up and he'll make a catch. He's got a good size, good build. I love the way he plays. He plays hard. He plays He plays with grit. That's what I like to say. He's got a nose for the end zone. That's another thing I'm, a, I'm huge on. If you can get in the end zone, that's huge. Um, the one problem he did have, he's, well, he's not the fastest. I don't know what he – Nick, do we have a 40 written down for Rashad Bateman? Did he Let run? Me if he ran one. I don't know. He might have not have run one. I don't think he ran one because I think I'd have it here. Um, and another thing is he dropped a lot of passes. That, that, was the, that was my problem. He needs to improve his hands, but I think that can be done. I think this is the first time we're going to see Lamar Jackson with a real weapon. Mike, he ran a 4-3-9. Is that – that's official? That, that's, that's what his pro day was. I got written down, yeah. Well, pro days aren't always. I, well, that, that's all they had this year. That's what we have to base everything off of. That's impressive. If he, if he can, it does not look like he runs that fast on film. If, if, he runs, if he runs hard like that on film, like in the game, if, if I watched him like moving that fast, it, I would never have guessed that. But I do like this pick a lot. He's my second receiver. He just needs to improve his hands. He's had some dropping problems, and that's very frustrating for an offense, and that can kill a drive. So fix the hands, and I'm excited to see how this pick goes. Rashad yeah, I, I'm a big fan. I was right when I, he was one of the first guys I scouted. I watched Chase in order like this. I did Chase Smith, Waddle, Bateman. And after watching Bateman, I had no like there was no way any of those guys besides I have one guy out of those guys I had ranked higher than him, and that's Devonte Smith. I have another guy that will be mentioned also in this video. Um, Rashad Bateman is my third ranked receiver in this draft. He was my number one for a while, but then I had to move things around. Size, speed, high pointing, using his body, great catching. Okay, here are my notes. Size, speed, high pointing, uses his body, and great catching ability, meaning spectacular catches. You said that you saw a few drops. I didn't see a lot of drops, but again, no, a lot of different stuff. I said, yeah, this guy has it all. I am a huge fan of Bateman. Like, he may be my favorite prospect to this point. I would like to see him work on his balance and not get tackled so easily. And also want to see him work on his releases. Does not have the greatest route running, but this guy attacks the football and has great breakaway speed. Love what I saw. Again, he high points of football. He doesn't have the greatest route running. Gets tackled a little bit too easy, but has breakaway speed. And it's just, when I watch this guy, I really love what I saw. He is my third ranked receiver in this year's draft. I agree with this pick in A. I absolutely love this pick for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm just hoping that, that Lamar Jackson can get the ball to him. Let's go with the next pick. Jason or Odafe away. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. Some people call him Jason. It's Odafe. Ravens fans, if you know what's going on with this guy's name, let us know. Let us, in the yeah, comments. please. But this guy's a freak of nature. It's like Penn State has been – I don't know what they've been doing. Like Micah Parsons is a phenomenal athlete. He moves like he shouldn't be able to move for his size. Same thing with Jason Owen. Nick, I got him as a down as a 4-3-6. Do you four, have that? I got 4-3-7, yeah. Like, how's that possible at 6-5 and whatever he weighs? That is absolutely it's four, Yeah, that is absolutely insane. He is an insane talent. He's a little raw. I will say that he needs to develop some more pass rush moves. He's a little raw. But this guy is a fast speed rusher that bursts off the ball. I can't wait to see this guy play in the NFL once he gets some more technique. He didn't have a great 2020 season production-wise, so he's a little bit unpolished as a pass rusher. But I do think he will improve, especially going into that Ravens defense. I, I can't wait to see this guy. He was my sixth rank ranked defensive end, and that was only because he was a little raw. If he was not a little raw and he was a little more polished, he'd be he'd be way up that list. 
I'm excited to see what he does in the NFL, and I'm a big fan of this pick also. Look, I love the physical of this guy, the uh, being unpolished part, and the second round really concerned me. And yes. it, it was th- – this is the worst pick, in my opinion, that you guys had the entire draft. I'll tell you this much. Here's in my – this is what I had in my notes after watching film. We're in a really fast 40, but does not seem as explosive on film as some of the other guys. Uses a wide loop to get around tackles. Does not have a large arsenal of weapons to use. Tons of talent needs coaching. Yeah, yeah love- at, like if there's any team that is going to be able to coach this guy – it's the Baltimore Ravens. Their defense is good every year, seems like, regardless. Yeah. So, again. So this guy's proper coaching. He's, he's a great prospect. He just needs to figure some things out. Yeah. Pass blocking. Or pass. The, the situation for him is good, right? Out of all the teams, this is one of the teams you want him to be on. The issue is, is that when I, when I scattered these guys, it was all about finding the prospects and ranking them as is where they're at. And I had him ranked as a 14th best edge rusher. Right now, polished. What? Right? He's not polished. He's very fast, big guy. Love to have him. Great Madden guy. For those of you who play Madden, I, this this might be one of the guys I use. But right now, for football, right now, not not so great. I give this pick a C minus. If they can coach him up, he could be very dominant. Right now, not the greatest. C minus, fourteenth ranked edge rusher. I look at what they what I think they can become, and yeah. I think he can become a, a player. Which you can do. I mean, it's not a first round pick. It's a second round pick. You're taking a little bit of a chance. We'll see. A team that needs a little less too. So that's why I don't really have a problem with it. Yep. So let's go. The pile of needs. Go with Ben Cleveland. Go ahead. I think Ben Cleveland's a good pick too. Ben Cleveland was my um. Where do I have my interior offensive lineman? Ben Cleveland is my fourth ranked interior O lineman, and I like the pick. I think a team that runs the ball like the Ravens. Like we've seen, they run the ball a, complete, a lot of different variations. That, that, uh, we're going to see a lot of from J.K. Dobbins this year, Gus, Gus the bus, and then Lamar runs the ball a lot himself too. So I like the Ben Cleveland pick. I think he's going to work well in the run game. He's a big, powerful guy. I like the pick. I think he's going to fit perfect in the offense. I really do. This is a hell of a pick. I, I don't know how these guys were – like. Ben Cleveland is my third-ranked interior offensive lineman. I said, big, powerful kid. When he gets his hands on the defender, he is good. But sometimes he whiffs. The times he whiffs is when he doesn't get his hands on the defender. When he gets his hands on, they're done. When he doesn't get his hands on, he whiffs. Had a great combine, just needs to work on his agility a little bit so he doesn't whiff completely. Look, this pick's an A. He was my third-ranked interior lineman. I love the draft pick here. Baltimore, this is becoming an incredible draft. Did you scout Brandon Stevens? No, that's the one I don't know. Me either. All right, let's go to Teal and Wallace. Go ahead. Now, Nick, I know how you like Teal and Wallace. Teal and Wallace is kind of like Bateman, but I think Bateman's faster than him. Um, he's a good 50-50 ball guy, can run routes, has a nose for the end zone. He'll just go up and get it. He's tough. And, and the thing with Teal and Wallace is he's dangerous after the catch. I saw him catch balls and turn, in, turn them into tremendous gains. I just don't think he's the fastest and most explosive guy. I got him at a 4.49. Um, he suffered a torn ACL in 2019, which is a little concerning. But I, I think it's, he's a good receiver, to be honest with you. I think this is a good pick. I know you love him, Nick. I think I had him as my – he was my sixth-ranked receiver in this draft. So I like the pick. I definitely like the pick at this value in the fourth round. I'm excited to see the Ravens offense this year. Lamar Jackson is going to have weapons, so we're about to see what he's all made of throwing the football. Yeah. Wow. For some reason, unless something changed for me, I had him listed as – let me make – yeah, what that – I for some reason, my she had a 4-3-9. No. But I do see 4-4-9, four, 4-5 four, four, now. Let me just see this again. Taylor Wallace. 40 times. That's weird. Four four. Wow. Okay. All right. Look, here's what I got listed down for him. Okay. Teelan Wallace is my number one ranked receiver in this year's draft. Sounds crazy. I think he's absolutely impressive. This guy, I, I sat down three grown men. I sat down and on the big screen, I said, you guys, I'm going to show you clips of, of, Three, no, I think I did four receivers. I did Jamar Chase. These guys don't watch college football, so I had no idea who's what. I just said, who's a better receiver? I had, uh, yeah, J- 
Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Rashad Bateman, and Taylor Wallace. And I love Bateman too, but it was by complete unanimous decision. Every single one of the men in the room, all three people that, that never watched college, they just looked at the film alone. Don't watch the media. Don't listen to the news, nothing. Just sat down and watched the film. They all of them said, Taylor Wallace looked like the best guy. He can beat you so many ways. Here's what I have written down. Absolutely impressive. He uses his body to go up and high point the footballs, break tackles and fights for extra yards. This guy looks faster than people give him credit for. And maybe then this 40 time, uh, uh, then I said, people give him credit for. Uh, I said, I have to go back and watch film again for sure though. So he looked fast and people give him credit for. I think that he just beats people downfield. I don't know how he does it. Then if he runs a four or five, I don't know. But he doesn't have to be the fastest guy. He just beats them. I don't know how he did it. He goes, he high points the ball. He breaks tackles. He's really, really impressive to me. He is my number one receiver in this year's draft. It sounds crazy, but I just have a feeling that this guy is going to be special. Going with Lamar kind of concerns me, him and Bateman both. But when you get my number one and my number three wide receivers in this year's draft, I think that is really incredible. The only reason why he fell here is because of that ACL injury that he had. Uh, and, and that's concerning. But we'll have to wait and see. Let's get a Sean Wade. Sean Wade, Nick, wasn't Sean Wade in, a couple years ago anticipated to be a very early draft pick? Yes. What yes, happened? Yes. Did he get hurt? Uh, I, I think he had one bad season, and everyone started questioning him from what I heard. That's what that's what the problem was? Because yeah. I remember Sean Wade was my – let's see where I had him right. Because he fell down boards fast. He, he yes, was, he like, did. supposed to be a first-round pick. Sean Wade was my eighth-ranked corner. And I think this is a phenomenal value in the fifth round because this I think this guy could be a starter in the NFL throughout his career. I really do. I think I do think he's I think he can play decent man coverage, but he that's where he struggled, if I'm correct, in 2020. What did you say it was? He was struggling on what was it? In man coverage. Yeah, I, I got kind of that more listed too. Yeah. Yeah. Because I in 2020, I remember watching some tape and he was getting beat a little bit, which is concerning. I, I got him as a good zone coverage guy. He looked better in zone coverage. Um, a decent ball hawker, and I, he's a willing tackler. He will go make a tackle. That's what you like to see in a corner. But I think the, for the upside of the fifth round, I think this is a tremendous pick. I, I understand he fell down boards, and there's some concern with him. But you, there was potential shown in, in 2019. I believe that 2019 was probably his big year, I would think, right? He had a I think year. it was, yeah. So, I mean, you play a down year in 2020 – Sometimes you just have a down year. So I definitely like the gamble here in the fifth round. I think this is a good pick. I think this is a great pick. In the, and as in a the confidence round. builder, too. I mean, when your confidence goes down, he's going to play worse. But now if the Baltimore Ravens increase that confidence again, we could be seeing a really good Sean Wade again. I said this kid is a physical zone corner. Physical. He wants to pound people. He can make amazing plays underneath on out routes and slants. Makes really nice deflections, but ultimately is a ball hawk. Uh he does a great job cutting routes and getting his hands on the football. Not the greatest downfield. I question his speed on deep balls. Like you said, man coverage downfield becomes a concern. If you use him as an underneath zone corner, one that can pound you five yard, right? Flats, slants, doing those things. He is phenomenal. And the Ravens have to use him to his strengths. And if they do that, I think this could absolutely be amazing for the Baltimore Ravens. He was my sixth ranked cornerback. I feel like if they use him where they want to use him, he'll be phenomenal. I, I grade this pick an A-plus. And already a really, really phenomenal cornerback room with Marlon Humphrey and, and Marcus Peters. You add Sean Wade, I really like what they got going here. Really love the pick, A-plus. Yeah, uh, did you scout Dalian Hayes or Ben Mason? No, I did not. I think Ben Mason's that fullback that always get him mad at. All right. Who do you got? What's the draft grade for the Baltimore Ravens? All right, so so far I've given out a couple a couple A minuses. I think I gave the Browns an A minus. I think I gave the Panthers an A minus. That might have been it. I'm trying to think who else. Maybe I, uh, I, the, I got I got a sheet written down right here. What what your what your what are you saying? A minus. minus. I think I may have given the Steelers an A minus. Yeah, I don't know who you gave to that to that yet. I think you gave the Steelers. Um, Before today, your only A minuses were the Panthers. My, I think just the Panthers. Or the Cowboys? Did you give it an A minus? No, you gave them a B plus. Yeah. Yeah, so, no. And maybe I, the Steelers, yeah. Good job correlating with what 
I saw the Steelers do, which I think the Steelers attacked needs and they went and they got needs. I think the Ravens did exactly what they had to do and they attacked needs. They needed receivers. They drafted two of my top 10 receivers coming out of this draft, which I think is huge. I think that's very impressive to do. Um, so I think it's like the Browns too. The Browns went out, they needed a corner and they went and built that defense. They got the second best linebacker in the second round, a phenomenal value. I'm going to give the Ravens an A minus also. I think that division has done a good job drafting so far. A team, the, those three teams, at least a minus for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm excited to see him this year. Lamar's got weapons. Yeah. Look, this is my official highest grade. I'm going and giving them an A. I love this draft. You said two of your top 10 receivers. They got two of my top three receivers. I, I That sounds nuts. I know that sounds great. I just think the upside of Teal Wallace is absolutely phenomenal. You got Bateman, okay, who I love. Jason Oway was the only thing bringing this down from like a prior A+. Plus. Ben Cleveland, I love. Teal Wallace, I love. Sean Wade, I love. That's four picks I absolutely love. All of them are A to A plus draft grades for me. I, I don't, I gave out a few A minuses so far, but my, my average draft grade is anywhere from a B minus to a B. This team absolutely exceeded all the other teams' measures. They, they got the highest draft grade out of all of them. This team deserves an A, and I, I loved what they did. I'm just hoping Lamar Jackson can give these guys the ball. And if they can, they're going to be really special. Uh, guys, that's all. We got our. Uh, coaching grades, our division rankings, and our hot takes coming up before the season. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for much more. See you guys soon. Peace. We are. Feel better. See you guys soon. Peace.